Hello, everyone. We're just going to wait a few minutes as folks enter in from the lobby. We've got a good group of people that will be joining us today. So just wait for us for just a minute or two and we'll get started on the presentation momentarily. All right, looks like we've got a good quorum of people that have entered in from the lobby. Welcome, my name is Tara Palacios and I have a great group of friends that are here with you today to do a webinar entitled, Boost Your Business on Local Budgets. This is a four part series that we're doing in conjunction with our great friends in Arlington's purchasing office and Arlington Economic Development. We came together, oh my gosh, maybe about a year ago at this point, to talk about business opportunities that small businesses, small women, minority-owned, veteran-owned businesses, that they can have to boost their budget and understand the process. And so we're really glad, this is where this webinar was born and where it came from. And so today you'll be hearing about how to do business with Arlington County. And for the subsequent next Fridays, you'll be hearing from our friends at, from the city of Alexandria, Fairfax County, as well as Prince William County. And so we're really excited to bring to you this information so that you understand how to boost your business on local budget. And it's our pleasure to have you here today. Uh, this series will also be taped, um, so this information, you'll be able to go back and refer to it. We also have handouts in the handout box that you can download that can also help you uh, as you work through and understand the intricacies of doing business on local budgets. And so it is my pleasure and my honor uh, to welcome you all here today. We're really excited for this opportunity uh, for you as a business to really understand what local governments are looking for, where our needs are, and how your business can benefit us <laughs> because we have needs of products and services and so that you fully understand that process. That is our goal for today. And we welcome you to this session. Uh, the agenda, after we do the welcome, there is going to be a special purchasing Jeopardy edition. So get your minds rolling. I hope everybody has had your cup of coffee because you may have the opportunity to win something very special. And I know you all weren't expecting that, so we're really excited. And then we'll jump into our presentation and we'll go into Boost Your Business. And then we'll have a Q&A session. And we want to make sure that everyone that has questions, if something is unclear or if uh, you uh, want to find out more information about something, we want to make sure that you leave out of today's session with your questions answered. Um, so our goal for the webinar is to make sure that you get your questions answered. And we also want to be as interactive as possible. Right now, everybody's on mute but you do have a raise your hand and you do have a question bar. Uh, we're gonna try to answer all the questions at the end of the presentation. However, if you really have a burning question and you don't wanna forget it, feel free to use the question bar to ask your questions. Raise your hand if you can't hear us, if the volume's too low, or if you can't see the presentation. Myself and the BizLaunch team will be in the background making sure to answer as many questions as we can. And we'll ask our amazing friends at the Arlington Purchase Office uh, the questions on your behalf um, as we go through. Um, and we'll have plenty of time for questions at the end. The program will take about an hour, but we have uh, a half an hour, it goes into 11.30 for any questions that you may have. And so unfortunately, our dear friend Chris Lay with the uh, Virginia Small Business Supplier Diversity Office, she couldn't be with us today. She'll be at subsequent uh, programs throughout the rest of the month. 
However, I did want you all to be aware of the program. It's the Virginia Department of Small Business and Supplier Diversity. She can work with you one-on-one -on -one as you have contracting opportunities. If you have questions about Eva, she is the Northern Virginia rep for the state and um, she is available to you um, as much or as often as you need. They also have a variety of programs and workshops that they're offering virtually. And I do want to invite everyone that's on the call today to our SWAMI Honors, which is on October 15th. We will be honoring all of our businesses in the Commonwealth of Virginia for the amazing work they're doing during these difficult times during the health pandemic. So we really invite you to join us. It's a free event if you go to our website. Um, and I can also put the link in the chat box as well um, how to register and how to get involved with the SWAMI Honors, but it's really about honoring you all. And so without further ado, it is my pleasure to introduce uh, the members of our Arlington County Purchasing Office who are on the program here with us today. I've had the absolute pleasure of working with Cynthia Davis, Mia Crosby, Sharon Lewis, and Melanie Hurley, and they will be your hosts for this dynamic, informative session today. And we are proud to call them members of our Arlington County purchasing team. Thank you all. Good morning, everyone. We wanted to bring a little fun to the event today so that we will begin with the game of Jeopardy. Once we start, please raise your hand if you're interested in selecting a category to answer a question. The first contestant's hand we see, we will, will be allowed to play. This person will continue to play if they successfully answer questions. If the contestant answer is incorrect, we won't take points away, but we will extend the opportunity for contestants to raise their hands for a chance to play. We will continue this cycle until the game ends. At the end of the game, the contestant with the highest score will receive some biz launch swag for winning the game. So the lucky winner should keep an eye out for an email from BizLaunch requesting your mailing address. Okay, now that I have explained the order of the game, are there any questions on how to play? Okay, let's play Jeffrey. Any volunteers? Don't be shy. This is fun. We're going to have a good time. And it's an opportunity for you to learn, learn some information today as well, but in a fun way. Hey, Cynthia, it looks like the first person to raise their hand was uh, Karen Douglas. So, Karen, I'm going to take you off mute. Good morning, Karen. Which category would you like? Might be a little bit of a delay. Karen, you should get a mute request, unmute request, excuse me. Is that better? Yeah, yes. hi. Good morning. Good All morning. Right. I'd like to do RFP 400. An informational meeting in the beginning of the RFP process. It could be deemed either a question and answer series or an RFI. What is the pre-proposal conference? We're gonna give you that, Karen. We're, we'll give you that because you answered it, but not with the exact terminology, but you did answer it correctly. Thank you. Thank you. Your next question. Okay, I think, I'm trying to see who, I think David um, had his hand up. So David, I'm gonna take you off mute, okay? You should get an unmute request here soon. Okay, I think David, we're having some technical difficulties hearing you. Um, oh, let's try that again. Okay, um, go to the next one. 
The next one I saw was Ruth. Ruth, I'm gonna take you off mute, okay? Okay. Oh, Ruth said 500 or ethics for 500 is what she said. Must have a, a technical difficulty or something mute in the audio. A contractor and county representative are spotted having lunch. Okay, Ruth. What's your answer, Ruth? What is the appearance of an impropriety? So Ruth didn't give us an answer, so we'll have to move on to the next contestant. Okay. Let me see here. Okay, Joanne, I have you have your hand up here. So let me unmute you, okay? Joanne, you should get an unmute request. Joanne, you should be off mute. Hmm. Uh, Cynthia, I'm sorry. I think we're having some technical difficulties with the with hand raising uh, or with Joanne. Um, I'll go to the next one. Okay. Let's see here. Oh, Joanne, you should be off mute. Did you, are you, you're, can you say, can you hear us or? Hmm. Okay. So, Okay, it looks like we're having a little bit of a delay. Um, I don't want to know if we want to do a global unmute, maybe for the game. We can try that. <laughs> Invitation to be here for 100. Sure. Beautiful. Tabulation posted immediately following the bid opening shows the lowest bid from this bidder. Best in eyes offer. Who's the winner? Who is the apparent low bidder? Sorry. Next contestant. I'll do Eva for 500. Big money. <laughs> the section of Eva of the Eva site that lists mandatory sources for state agencies. What is vendors? What is statewide contracts? Oh. Thank you for trying. Next, cont next contestant. I'll okay. take ethics for 200. A vendor offering concert tickets to a county representative could present this type of dilemma. Conflict of interest. What is a conflict of interest? <laughs> What is an ethical dilemma? <laughs> Thank you for trying. Next contestant. I'll take terms and condition for 500. 
Alex. Virginia oh. law does not permit public bodies to compensate for harm or loss. Um, what is indemnification? Devil Jeopardy, way to go. Woo, woo. That's good. Yeah. Cool. Next question for Tomica. Oh. Good job, Tomica. Tamika. Thank you. You get to keep going. Yes. Oh. Um. Okay. This is kind of ridiculous. Let's take. Can I take Eva for four hundred? After your response to a quick quote, this is the next required document before the delivery of goods or services. What is a purchase order? Way to go. Congratulations. Okay. You get to go again. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Let's go with invitation to bid for 300. Competitive seal bidding. What is What is non-responsive? Oh. oh, you had a good run, Tamika. Thank you for trying. Thank you. What's an, what's an RFP? What's an RFP? David, would you like to choose a category? Who? Yes, what is your category? Uh, let's do Eva for 100. Purchases can be made using this informal method below 200,000 on EVA. What's a quick quote? Way to go. Good job, David. Next question for you, David. Uh, EVA for 200. Double Jeopardy. The section of EVA that lists solicitation. Uh, uh, the solicitation what, is what is Virginia Business Opportunities, also known as VBO? Thanks, David, for participating. Our next contestant. Hi, can I have requests for proposals for 500, please? Big money. A meeting where an offerer presents on their proposal. What is an oral presentation? Way to go, Kaylin. Thank you. Your next question. Ooh. Uh, we'll keep going big money. Can we do invitation to bid for 500, please? Sure. When a bid is received after the bid due date and time. Um, what is non-responsive? Good job. What is a late bid or non-responsive? Next question. I'll stick with invitation to bid for 400, please. The names of bidders and the dollar amounts of each bid received is read aloud at this public event. What is the bid opening? Way to go. Congratulations, Kaylin. You're on a winning streak. Next <laughs> um, can I do a request for proposals for 400, please? A respondent to an RFP. What is an offer? Woo! Congratulations. Next question. Oh, this is exciting. <laughs> big money, big money. <laughs> Can I do ethics for 400, please? An offer to a county representative of something of value to receive a contract award. Hmm. What is a kickback? 
Good job, Kaylin, uh, but not uh, this time. This is what is a bribe. Thank you. Participating. Next contestant. Okay, so for the sake of time, oh. we're in the game here, and we'll move on to our next section. So, as I said earlier, please remember to watch out for an email from BizLaunch to receive your BizLaunch swag. And we'll talk about how to respond to county solicitations and discuss future business opportunities. Then we'll have a Q&A session. During the Q&A, you will have an opportunity to ask questions regarding the presentation and any other general purchasing questions. Let's begin our discussion on how to do business for Arlington County. The county uses its online procurement solution, vendor registry to post formal solicitations and award notices and contracts made after FY20. Formal solicitations, are for agreements we have determined that will exceed 200,000. The county also uses EVA, Virginia's online procurement solution to post our formal solicitation notices, informal solicitations, and contracts issued before FY20. However, purchasing staff is currently migrating FY20 and prior agreements to vendor registry from EVA. We refer to informal solicitations as quick quotes. In various departments, county staff issue quick quotes for goods, services, and construction that will not exceed 200,000. The 200,000 threshold is a change from 100,000 that became effective July 1st of this year. We encourage vendors interested in doing business with the county to register in vendor registry and EVA. For vendor registry, it is free to register, and for each vendor account, you can have two contacts, but there is only one login per account. Please make sure your email addresses are up to date on vendor registry and EVA, as they will be used to receive notifications about solicitations and award notices for vendor registry. Selecting the appropriate commodity, commodity code is vital for vendors when signing up in both systems. Vendors should select multiple commodity codes that align with the goods or services your company provides. Doing this is essential because our purchasing staff will choose as many commodity codes as possible for their solicitations to ensure that potential bidders are notified and promote competition. I will now turn the presentation over to Melanie Hurley, Assistant Purchasing Agent. Good morning, everyone. Let's talk about Arlington County's historical spend. In FY20, Arlington County issued 322 quick quotes and 123 formal solicitations. Those are ITVs, RFPs, and other procurement methods. This relates to approximately $167.3 million in spend for general government, public safety, environmental services, health and welfare, libraries, parks, recreation and culture, planning, and community development. And while our FY20 capital program estimated carryover is still in process, as well as our FY21 appropriation, Arlington County expects to spend approximately $728.9 million in technology, public safety, transportation, public government facilities, community infrastructure, local parks and recreation, and utilities and stormwater infrastructure. And while these numbers are estimate and may change, uh, these are all ways that we provide services to our community. So such opportunities will always exist. Now let's talk, to, talk about how do we respond to solicitations to take advantage of those opportunities. Arlington County looks at being responsive and responsible. So to be responsible, responsive to a bid or proposal, it means that your bid or proposal must fully conform and all material aspects to the solicitation and all of its requirements. This means that you must read each opportunity carefully. You want to look for words such as shall or must, which means you must complete that requirement. For example, questions regarding original solicitation must be submitted by 
X date. You may also see um, things like you must use a particular form, bid, bid proposal or quotation form when you return your, uh, your bid or proposal. We also, you'll also see that you must date, must be, the bid or proposal must be signed and fully executed and submitted electronically in a designated system like vendor registry. You will also see these words around bid bonds requirement and for construction. Um, and when we need you to submit proof of certain minimum qualifications. When you see the words will, those words mean that that is something that the, the county will fulfill in terms of responsibility. So we ask that you read all submission requirements and follow instructions. Our solicitations tell you what you must submit, minimum qualifications that you have to approve, what insurance requirements you must have. It also tells you that you may be required to have an Arlington business license and how to contact our business license office to see if that would be a necessary requirement for that solicitation. Lastly, our, our solicitations tell you that you may be required to be registered or you will be required to be registered with the State Corporation Commission, SEC, to receive a contract award. Our solicitations also tell you that if it's an ITB or quick quote, that you cannot negotiate the terms and conditions unless our document states otherwise. All solicitations also include our sample contract. So be sure to look at all of those terms and conditions and make sure that you can comply if you are awarded. Clauses with an asterisk in an RFP means that it's mandatory and, can, and it cannot be negotiated. So we want you to pay attention to the details and definitely ask questions. When you want to ask a question, please submit those on vendor registry in the, in the solicitation question section. Please do not send them directly to the purchasing staff. And as always, in any solicitation, we want you to build on lessons learned, especially after an RFP. Debriefs are a good tool to understand how you scored on each evaluation criteria of that solicitation. So just ask the procurement officer of that solicitation for a debrief to learn how you, uh, your proposal was evaluated so that you can do, um, that you can continue to exceed. And while the, the term responsible is often associated with an ITB, even in an RFP, we look at whether you as a bidder or offerer is truly capable of meeting all requirements of that solicitation and contract. What that means is we're looking at things like, do you, are you financial, um, financially and technically capable of performing that contract? Do you have a history of satisfactory performance? And are you able to deliver on schedule? And do you have the necessary goods, services, facilities, and equipment to fulfill the contract? So when we ask you to build, demonstrate your ability to perform, definitely showcase your past work and make sure that they align to the scale and scope of the proposed activity. And just like you, you would in a job interview, as we're gonna ask for references, make sure that your references know that you're applying for an opportunity. I'm gonna now turn it back to Cynthia so that she can discuss how um, to respond to future business opportunities. Thank you, Melanie. Now let's shift our discussion to business opportunities. And to do so, we will start by discussing the different solicitation methods we use here at the county. Let's begin first with construction manager at risk, also referred to as CMAR. CMAR is an alternate construction delivery method to competitive silt bids. These are fixed price contract awards where the construction manager provides a guaranteed maximum price for the construction and all related services for the construct for constructing the entire project. In CMARC contracts, the construction manager conducts the bidding process, creating opportunities for vendors like yourself to receive work as a subcontractor. The county actively uses this solicitation method and currently has four active CMAR projects. For these projects, the county has either awarded contracts and work is underway or in the solicitation phase. For potential contracting opportunities, vendors should make sure that they are actively looking for these types of solicitations in vendor registry under the solicitation tab. Now we'll discuss design build. Design build is another solicitation that results in a fixed price contract. With these contracts, the designer and contractor work together from the beginning as a team to perform the work under the contract, thus resulting in a single source of responsibility. 
The county actively uses the solicitation method, and we have one project currently being procured under the design build process. Like CMAR, a design build solicitation also provides subcontracting opportunities. Vendors should review vendor registry under the solicitation tab for these solicitations and attend pre-proposal conferences to network with other potential bidders. Job order contracting, also referred to as JOP. Job order contracting is an active program we have here at the county. These are task order based contracts where contractors use fixed price items from a construction price catalog to provide proposals to complete work requested by various county departments. The county routine, routinely uses these contracts. We are in the process of making new awards which, that will take effect in November. Since we will soon award new contracts, vendors should monitor vendor registry for future job solicitations. Our new agreements will not include a self-performing requirement, so this will be another opportunity for subcontracting work. After the county makes the latest awards, vendors can contact the contractors to inquire about subcontracting opportunities. So keep a close eye on vendor registry next month. Now we'll discuss transportation projects. The county's division of transportation operates a disadvantaged business enterprise program for re following regulations of the United States Department of Transportation with a proposed goal of 10.6% for each federal transit administration funded project. For federal highway administration projects, goals are provided by VDOT. For fiscal years 2021 through 2023, over 58 million is allocated for these projects. Among other projects available for DBE firm certified firms, vendors should watch for upcoming construction projects such as constructing a new elevator at Pentagon City Metro Rail Station, construction of transit, transit stations along Columbia Pike, and four mile run trail improvements. Vendors can find information on becoming DBE certified by visiting the Virginia Department of Small Business and Supplier Diversity's website or visiting the Metropolitan Washington Airport's Authority's website. For questions on the Transportation Division's DBE program, please contact the Grants Compliance Specialist Francis TD at ftd at arlingtonva.us. Francis will also be available to answer questions during our Q&A section of this conference. Now, Melanie will resume discussion on this topic of business opportunities. Great, thank you, Cynthia. So let's talk about some other, uh, other opportunities. So invitation to bid or ITB are the solicitation method used when the county has a definite scope of work and specification, and the county is mainly seeking price. So a lot of times you will see this in construction. This means that your bid must meet all the requirements of that ITB as awards are made to the lowest responsive and responsible bidder. Currently, the county has two open ITBs and five ITBs are in review. Requests for proposals are used when the county is seeking business businesses who have the technical expertise and capacity to provide us with solutions to our needs. RFPs contain evaluation criteria that you as offers would need to respond to. Based on those criteria, the highest evaluated offer is awarded. You may see RFPs for all types of goods and services, but also as a part of CMAR and design build solicitation methods. Currently, Arlington has two open RFPs for response and seven are being evaluated. For both ITBs and RFPs, you may have a pre-bid or pre-proposal conference opportunity. For businesses like yourself, this is a great opportunity to hear information from purchasing and the project officer about the opportunity, such as key submission requirements, scope, specification details, and deadlines. Deadlines may be for questions, equivalent items to be considered, and submission dates for your bid or proposal. It also gives you an opportunity to ask questions and provide, and provide great networking. As most pre-bid or pre-proposal conferences are not mandatory, if you cannot attend, always check vendor registry for addendum to see questions asked and answered under, under the solicitation tab, which we'll go to in just a few. If a meeting is held, you will see the meeting attendance sheet with the names, phone numbers, and email addresses of all attendees. So this can be used for subcontracting opportunities. Quick quotes are another method that we use. We issue quick quotes for goods and services $200,000 and below. Unlike ITBs and RFPs, 
These opportunities can be solely found on EVA under the Business Opportunities tab. To see them, you just have to click View, Open, Informal, and, and Small business Purchase Requests link from our purchasing website. So let's go and see some of these current business opportunities. We are gonna come from the Arlington main website, so you know how to navigate to this page that will be helpful as you respond to any solicitation. So we are gonna search for purchasing. Okay, so then we will click on purchasing, budget and finance. And here is the main page. Well, we won't go to the view open informal and small purchases link. Um, we will, we want you to see that it's there and it's sorted by Arlington County government. So you don't have to do much work when you want to see those opportunities. But let's look at view open solicitations on vendor registry. So here you'll see the view that we have all of the links. At the top, you'll see register my business which you want to definitely do if you want to respond to an opportunity. While all of these links do not require you to be registered at the time of reviewing them, if you are going to submit a bid, you must be registered. So right now you see services for tree services. We have comprehensive medical and dental, prescription and drug, drug benefits. And you see that that is an RFP. The first one was an ITB. You'll see that also as a construction type project, another ITB, we are doing work on North Highland Street um, from First Road to Arlington Road. Then you'll see another RFP for management operation services for Arlington County Paratransit Call Center Program. And lastly, you'll see another IATB for construction services for Roslyn Highland Playground. So let's click on the ITB for the Highland Street. So we can kind of see what that looks like, uh, the one above. Okay, we'll look at this one. So here you'll see, okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, so here you'll see that there are two options at the top. The first one, you'll see submit a bid, and you'll also see the ability to submit a question. So what that means is that we are in that question timeline that we were just talking about. So if you submit a question, then everyone can see the opportunity um, or see your question, and then everyone will be able to see the response, which is always helpful. So always look for that. Um, you'll see the deadline is October 29th at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You'll also see that there is a pre-bid conference, as well as the link to join that pre-bid conference. And as right now, those are all going through um, Microsoft Teams. So all you have to do is click on it, and then we'll be there to do it. The other thing that you will see here is attendance is, is optional. So if you can't attend, definitely make sure you check back here for those sign-in attendance sheets that we just talked about. Um, so then you'll see down there, there's documents that you can, that you can look at. Um, so you'll see the full solicitation, and then we've conveniently taken out the bid form that you must return back to us um, in a separate attachment. Um, you'll also see that there's something that says all additions and questions. If you click all, you'll be able to see every addendum that is ever issued, as well as the questions and asked and the questions answered. So this first addendum, you'll be able to see that there's a formal addendum that we've attached here that you can look at. Um, but you'll also see right below that, the first question asked and the question answered. This will help you to get your response to the, um, the bid you, before you submit your bid. So now let's talk, let's turn it over to looking at questions and answers, if you have any questions. Okay. Does anyone have any questions? I know we there, you probably asked some questions during our chat while we were going through that. So what questions do you have for us? Yeah, we have a few hands raised. So I will just try to, um, it looks like Kaylin, um, I've got you first here, so I'll take you off mute. Oop. Okay. 
I, I apologize. I had my hand raised previously when I was trying to play the game. Oh, my bad. I took it down. My bad. <laughs> Did you have a question though, or? No, I'll let everyone else go. Thank you, though. Okay, no problem. Okay, it looks like we've got one in the question box. Um. Um. Alex, there's actually a couple in the question box. Okay. Uh, someone wanted to know, um, Chris McGow, can you elaborate on the difference between registering for vendor registry and EVA? Are both required or optional to compete for business? Sure, I'll take that. Um, the difference between vendor registry and EVA is vendor registry is the county's official e-procurement solution. This is where we post our actual solicitations and where um, bidders and offerers can actually register to upload and respond to our solicitations. EVA we use for quotes. That's where the departments issue informal solicitations. Um, you are required to register in both in order to respond. Um, but our primary e-procurement solution is on vendor registry. Does that answer your question? I'll add a little bit to that if I could, Cynthia. What, um, what you'll also find on EVA, when you go to EVA for our solicitations, will just be strictly the advertisement that takes you over to vendor registry. We no longer post our full solicitations on EVA. So anything you see on EVA will direct you to vendor registry. Um, as uh, Melanie mentioned earlier, not prohibited from downloading um, from our vendor registry site, but in order to respond, registration is required. But whatever you see on EVA will simply be an advertisement that brings you over to vendor registry. So it is important that you register to do business with us. Thank you. Okay, and we had another question from Julie. If you submit a question on a RFP, everyone will see the question, but do they see my firm name? No, if you submit a question, we don't uh, see, you don't see, no one else sees your, um, your firm name, they will just see the question. So um, it's like what we just saw, you won't see, in your private information um, revealed. Okay, thank you. And then um, Claudia had asked, um, can a company incorporated somewhere else besides Arlington bid for these projects? I think maybe, is that our out of state? I'm, I'm thinking too, is that possible? Or? Yes, you don't have to have your business um, located in Arlington to submit responses to our solicitations. However, it is a requirement that if you are a corporation that you are required with um, Virginia's um, State Corporation Commission. Like register as a foreign agent if you're like a Maryland-based company, that kind of thing. Okay, that's helpful. Thank you. Um, I think we also had some folks with their hands raised too. Um, let's see. Uh, I've got Claudia. Um, uh, Ruth, I think you had your hand raised, and I'm not sure if this is from Jeopardy, but I'm going to try um, if you want to ask your question. Okay. I think there might be a delay in the unmute um, request, but we had another question come through from Mark. He says, I'm still a little cloudy on why there are two distinct systems, i.e. a vendor registry is a procurement site and EVA is where the advertisements get posted. Why is an EVA account necessary? I'll take that. Um, originally, um, the Arlington County did not have its own procurement, e-procurement system. What we're not, we're not trying to restrict folks from knowing what opportunities we have. So we've decided to keep posting our opportunities on EVA until we get um, our own vendor registry database loaded with as many vendors as possible. If we stop posting on the EVA system, all the folks that have continuously or in the past done business with us 
would no longer see the information. And we're definitely not trying to do that. So in an effort to make sure everyone is aware that we now have our own system, which only started um, about seven months ago, uh, we have decided to continue with EVA being the state database to make sure folks now recognize Arlington County has a vendor registry system. So it's just continuity and trying to make sure vendors still know that, hey, we're still out here doing business and still welcoming all contractors and vendors. Thank you, Sharon, that's helpful. Um, the next question comes from Chitana, um, and they're asking, does doing business only involve responding to posted RFPs? Can an offer propose an innovative solution that may be eventually considered for funding? I'm guessing this is like maybe more technical, like a, a technical solution, or, or how does one go about um, that? I'll take that one. Um, so there is an opportunity to submit to Arlington County um, proposals in which we don't make the request. So that would be something that we wouldn't ordinarily, that we would not have posted, but you're actually going to submit something to us um, unsolicited. So we absolutely accept unsolicited proposals for innovative ideas. Um, those would be submitted directly to me as the purchasing agent for the county. Um, and then it would be viewed according to what we uh, consider as PPEA, which is unsolicited proposal platform. The process is a little different, uh, but it is spelled out in our purchasing manual in an appendix. So please be sure and take a look at that. But we absolutely would love to hear about any innovations or suggestions that you may have. But it would definitely go through a process. We would acknowledge it. Um, a county manager has, has a big part in deciding what we do in unsolicited proposals as well. But we're definitely open to getting any information we can. And we also would like to get your innovation even in solicited proposals, which is, which is the greatest opportunity in the request for proposal process. Since that's an offer, we're looking for offers of innovation as well. So if vendors would keep that in mind, it would be most helpful to us. But great question, thank you. Yeah, no, thank you for that, Sharon. I, I know we have a lot of very innovative companies in Arlington that they're doing very technical solutions for government or business. I mean, I met with somebody that has a, um, they're doing a wellness kiosk that, you know, takes temperatures and, and monitors for mask compliance during the COVID era. And like, that's kind of a new thing, right? <laughs> so, thank oh, you. Yes, so please, please send those innovative. We would direct it to the departments that would be um, interested in those areas, uh, we'd stay in touch with you and, and keep you aware, but we're definitely open to new things on the market. You guys have that expertise and we really need it. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Um, anybody else? I don't have any other questions at the moment. Um, any, if, any, any last, anybody else? Oh, one from, yeah, um, it's, Sharon, this is a follow-up to the last question. Um, Ash is looking, um, where would I get all the info related to this kind of procedure? Is is there kind of a, should I have them go to that website that you guys showed or is there a better place? Um, we can actually, if I could ask Mia to put the link to the purchasing manual, uh, maybe in the chat um, and then dark, and you, you, we have an actual appendix there that would walk you through that process. Beautiful, okay. Thank you. But definitely can reach out to any to me or anyone on our team as well, and we can direct you. Beautiful. Thank you. Okay, and we'll get that in the chat for you. Um, and then I know if you didn't um, be already, but there's some handouts in the um, um, that you can get access to how to register for EVA and a little bit about the the county's procurement system, so you can download those and um, get access to those today. But um, and anyways, I think that is it. Um, um, so one more question, Alex. Oh, um, I didn't see that. Elisa um, wanted to know if you have uh, innovative ideas, who do you send those to? And I believe, Sharon, you said that would go to you? Absolutely. It would come to me as the purchasing agent for the county, and then I would run it through, make sure that it goes through the proper process and get to the channels that actually need to see it and review it. Um, one one question I have, because we sometimes when we're out in economic development, we'll meet with businesses and they are, have a technology 
and they want to is it best for them to meet with you first or should they speak with the department to see if the department is interested how how what is the best way to handle that it's definitely the best thing that they reach out to the purchasing agent first so please come through the purchasing office uh, departments are actually advised not to take a lot a lot of um, requests like that just straight from vendors mainly because we are geared on spending the taxpayers' dollars by using competition. So if there's going to be something coming through that is non-competitive and not gone through a posting to the public process, then it should come directly to me. And then I would forward it to the department um, as needed. Good information. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And then there's one yeah. more. Um, from Mark Steele, he wanted to know what are the official emails needed to communicate with the office? Yeah. That would be purchasing at arlingtonva.us. And I'll go ahead and give mine directly. So it's S as in Sharon, Lewis, L E W I S, and the number one at arlingtonva.us. And also you'll find our information on the website that was just shown to you as well on that on that first page. Awesome, thank you. Okay, doesn't was there any other questions? Tara, are you seeing any other questions that we I, have? Um, just people are very appreciative of the session. Um, I just want to remind everyone that um this is the first in a four part series. So you've got more opportunities to learn more from around the region as well. So we've got next week, next Friday at the same time, same place, uh, information on doing business with the city of Alexandria. And if I could just have just a couple of seconds, um, I would definitely like to just First of all, I'll tell everyone, thank you so much for attending this event. Um, I realize that all of you are taking taking time out of your professional and personal schedules to do this, and I realize how 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 busy the small businesses are. So so thank you for that. Um, I know we shared a lot of information with you. I want to make sure that you understand. Not only can your questions come through vendor registry when we have something posted, please reach out to us before that. We can actually help you with solicitation process. We can talk you through what our normal process is. Um, so give us a chance um, to support you because that's really what we're here for. Um, our department in purchasing is, is a customer service agent, not only for our internal customers, but definitely for you in the vendor community. Um, we do wanna continue this process. So, and, and have many other events with you um, in, in connection with our friends here on the call. Um, so please let us know how we can help, what we can do. It doesn't have to be at the time you see something posted. If you have some questions before you see anything, uh, that's what we do and that's what we love to be able to do to support. Um, so as it was mentioned, next Friday is the City of Alexandria on the 16th. Uh, we're all gonna be logged into that as well. Um, so we want to continue this um, as a region um, and it's very important to us and I just appreciate it. Thank you to my team for everything that you did to put this together. Um, all my staff are on as well. So we just appreciate it from the bottom of our hearts and we look forward to doing business with you and helping you in any way we can. Uh, the one thing I wanna add, Sharon, that I think a lot of people don't consider is there's always this push to do business on the federal level, but it's also great to be able to do it on the local level because you can get past performance. And so these opportunities that the business owners on the call have is priceless. And I, I really uh, encourage them, especially during these times, to reach out because the county, we that's, have need. That's right. Please give us an opportunity. Uh, we may have many things that we can help you with, and we get a lot of calls for references from other organizations. So doing business with us and contracting with, with Arlington County 
is a great way, even if you're just starting in this field, working in government agencies and contracting with the government. Um, we have a lot of expertise as a team um, in how we can help you and support you and, and help you submit the best solicitations and responses to our solicitations. We also help explain terms and conditions. Um, we try our best to shorten our contract documents so you're not looking at this huge document that kind of puts fear in some small businesses. So please let us help you um, in understanding those things better. Well, that's, thank you so much. Thank yeah. you to our friends at the purchasing office. We, we hope to, we're looking forward to doing more of this in the future. We thank you all for participating and we'll see you at the same time, same place next week. Thank you, thank you, <laughs> thank you everyone. Thanks everyone. Thank you.